Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I have come to set the earth on fire, and how I wish it were already blazing. There is a baptism with which I must be baptized, and how great is my anguish until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to establish peace on the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, a household of five will be divided, three against two and two against three. A father will be divided against his son and a son against his father, a mother against her daughter and a daughter against her mother, a mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, regrettably for far too many, Christianity and Catholicism is synonymous with stability with conservatism, with old-fashioned family values, being nice, and in the eyes of some, being better than others. It's viewed as a kind of a club. But authentic Christianity is an encounter with the God-man Jesus, and it's dangerous. It is truly dangerous. And he's as provocative now as the Lord was 2,000 years ago. Because if you take the Lord seriously, your life will be changed. Indeed, for some, your life will be destroyed. He will make you uncomfortable. He will offer you salvation, but only in and through the cross. My dear brothers and sisters, in today's Holy Gospel, Jesus makes it very clear that to be his disciple will bring demands, and it will also bring division, division within our lives, division within our families. So why in the world allow this Jesus into your life? Why? Why is it important to allow this profound troublemaker into your life? Because it's true. Because everything he says is true. Now, if you don't believe that Jesus is God, if you ultimately think that Christianity is just one club among many for nice people, then I would advise you to walk away. Because it ain't worth the suffering that will come with it. It's not worth the division that will enter into your life. But if in fact the Lord is who he claims himself to be, if the church is what it claims itself to be, the bride of Christ, the authentic interpreter and communicator of dogma and doctrine divinely revealed, if in fact we are the body of Christ, made to be so by the waters of baptism, the very waters that will give Solve this evening a rebirth, if in fact it's all true, then there's nothing else. In the words of Peter, you have the words of everlasting life. To whom shall we go? It's either you or the cave, to use a philosophical image. A cave which admittedly can be rather comfortable and nice and warm and full of illusions and lies and mediocrity. The words again of the Messiah and the person of the Messiah is just as provocative now as it was 2,000 years ago in an era of persecution. Certainly, for those who must speak words of sanity, in the face of increasingly insane attacks against human sexuality and biological reality. Certainly, it's a divisive figure, divisive teaching for those who must defend the rights of the unborn against increasingly hysterical calls for the right to kill. 
Certainly, it is divisive and challenging for those who are called to defend the rights of the poor and the immigrant, regardless of where they come from, reminding us all that their rights come from their humanity, not their citizenship. And perhaps most difficult of all, this Jesus and this church is divisive for those who must speak words of love and compassion in a world that demands vengeance and easy answers and us versus them. This, I think, is the most difficult of all the moral teachings. Love your enemy? Come on. Love your enemy? Pray for those who persecute you? Turn the cheek? Offer another chance to those who have wounded you? Get real. My dear brothers and sisters, Jesus is a challenge. He is a challenge to us all to live a different way of life than the world. We are called to be in the world, but not of the world. And the moment we think of Christianity as just the nice, pleasant veneer over bourgeois principles and theories of life, values, we have lost something fundamental. And that something fundamental is the encounter with the person of Jesus. The person of Jesus who says to us, I want to set you on fire. I want to set you and your family ablaze. For those who are sane, the proper response is, stay away. Stay away from me. Because you will change me. But for those who have come to realize that the crazy claim that God has become a baby that God has become a crucified criminal, that God has given to ordinary sinful human beings the power to forgive and to consecrate the sacred host. For those who have come to believe these truths, there is no other answer. There is only fire. There is only fire and change and division and love. My dear brothers and sisters, let us pray that we might once again be shocked by the claims of Christianity, that we might be roused up out of our slumber to realize what it is that we are being challenged to do and to be, something different, something new, something holy. Let us be willing to take up the demands of the gospel, as challenging as they are, Let us be willing to walk with this one, this crazy one, who will lead us home, who will save us.